So this is the Sunday in the church year we call Transfiguration Sunday. The season of Epiphany is coming to a close. Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. The first Sunday of Lent will be next Sunday. So we're in a, a time of change. The altar decorations will change. Jesus has changed in this story today. He's been transfigured, we're told, which is just a big fancy word that means changed. To be transfigured is to be changed or transformed into something that looks different. I know I look different this morning. After our conversation last Thursday at Panera about call, I was thinking about my call, and someday I'll tell you the whole story. Um, suffice it for now to say that I was not exactly cooperative when I got my call, because when I was in my early 20s, and perhaps this lingers today, I liked to, I, um, I have to admit I was sort of a fashionista, shall we say. And so when God said, Sue, you should become a pastor, I said, well, I can't do that because I like clothes. <laughs> and I like to sew clothes and wear, you know, it's wearable art. It's very interesting. And if you have to wear clothes anyway, they might as well be interesting. And if I do that, people will look at my clothes every Sunday and they won't listen to what you're trying to say through me. And God said, wear a robe. <laughs> and God sent me to work with a woman pastor in my second year of seminary who wore the most ugly shoes you ever saw. And I said to God, I will not wear ugly shoes. God said, fine, stand behind a pulpit. So here I am. I've got something up my sleeve, because usually I wear a robe. So hang in there with me. Jesus changed, too, on that mountain all those years ago. His disciples think they were just going out for a nice hike up a tall mountain, you know? Seems like a good thing to do, and they loved Jesus, and they kind of figured, I'm sure, they were just taking a hike up, and then they'd come down and go back to work. But they got up there, and suddenly Jesus' clothes changed, changed more than mine, changed to a brighter white than anybody could make clothing here on earth. And then, as we've said, these two ancient biblical characters show up, talking to Jesus like they've been best friends forever, Moses and Elijah. We know about Moses and Elijah. At least there are stories in the Bible that can tell us about them. Moses is the one who led God's people out of slavery in Egypt through the desert to the promised land, to freedom. And along the way, they stopped, and he went up another mountain. Be careful about mountain climbing. Because when he got the top, that's when he got the Ten Commandments, right? And he came back down, and his face was just glowing so much the people couldn't bear to look at him. Not because he was out of breath and the exertion was making his face flushed, but because he had seen God or been there in God's presence. Moses was transformed by this experience of God. And Elijah was another prophet we hear about in the Bible who did great things including at one point he even, like Moses, divides the waters of the Jordan River so he can pass through unharmed. And then when he went up in a whirlwind to heaven, he passed on his spirit to one of his followers who carried on with the work. So we know about Moses and Elijah, and then here all of a sudden, years later, when they, we think they've been long gone, they show up again on this mountaintop with Jesus, talking to him. And I'm guessing that Peter, James, and John must have known these Bible stories well because they recognized these two men on the mountaintop. And I suppose if they hadn't known the stories, they would have caught on when Jesus' clothes turned this brilliant white and then these two ancient biblical characters showed up starting talking to him and then the voice from the cloud. I mean, I, they would have had to have been really slow to miss it. But they knew from that mountaintop experience that Jesus was no ordinary human being. Jesus was the Son of God come to earth to help others. And they could tell that by all these things that happened on the mountain, including the company he kept, Moses and Elijah. And then before they knew it, it was time to go down the mountain and back to life 
as they knew it with other people. Time to hang out with all kinds of people. Now, I don't know what your parents were like. I'm not even sure I heard this from my parents, but certainly I got this sense the parents are people who always go around to their kids and say things like, think about who you're hanging out with. Consider the company you keep. Don't get in with the wrong crowd. All these things that we hear when we're kids. And it's kind of a hard, confusing time, I think, for a lot of us in high school. I mean, high school is full of cliques, at least mine was. Think back to your high school days. Can you think of the different groups in your high school. Can you name any of them? Drama click. The jocks. Band. Who? Band. Band. <laughs> yeah. What did you call the people who really studied hard? Nerds. Nerds, yes. Any other groups you can think of? All right, so how many of you were in the band? Raise your hand. Ah. How many of you were in drama stuff? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you were jocks? Raise your hand. How many of you were nerds? Interesting. So now, I haven't been here that long. I was in two groups. What would you guess I was in? Nerds, yeah. <laughs> Amen, sister. And one other one. Maybe you need a clue. The disciples needed a clue, so it's okay if you need a clue. Ready? Are you paying attention? Not the band, the jocks. Can you believe it? Your pastor? I know things change. <laughs> I know, and I don't usually wear this because I feel self-conscious. Number one, because now you all know I'm a jock. I used to be a jock. Mainly because I loved cross-country skiing. But you know what, you can't just ski for a few months of the year and then do nothing and then show up the next season, because you get out of shape. So I also did cross country and track. And, and there is one letter in choir. <laughs> but mainly a jock, and a ner definitely a nerd. And isn't it wonderful that high school is behind us? <laughs> I don't know why it is in high school that we label ourselves and, and put ourselves in cliques so much. And I don't think I fully understood the repercussions of those cliques. I mean, I, I was certainly aware of them and aware of which ones I fit into and which ones maybe I didn't. It wasn't until my senior year of high school that one of my friends, one of my nerdy friends who was also in the drama club, said to me, you know, Sue, you're all right. I thought you were just one of those jocks who liked to run around in circles <laughs> around the track. I was like, well, I was running around in circles on the track, but that was to stay in shape for skiing. I mean, how could he not know that? And skiing is wonderful, but that's another topic for another day. <laughs> Fortunately, once we get out of high school, maybe we have to wait till we're after college, we move beyond these cliques that we used to be a part of, perhaps. The boundaries blur, praise God. You know, we can actually hang out with people who used to do different things than we did. So who do we hang out with now? Who do you hang out with? This is a question I'm looking for answers. <coughs> Friends, co-workers, children. I'll talk to you after class. <laughs> There's laughing going on over there. Children, who else? Co-workers, family, yep. People who lived your life. Lots of different groups of people. And here, we also hang out with church people, don't we? And that gives us a whole different perspective, I think, at least it has for me, to realize 
that God didn't call us to stay with the jocks or with the nerds or with whatever group we used to be part of. God has called us to expand our horizons, to let those boundaries continue to blur and to even hang out with people who maybe are on the wrong side of the tracks sometimes. Jesus did. Jesus went and hung out with all kinds of people. And that's one of the ways that we know him, isn't it? We know him by the company he kept. Yes, he hung out with Moses and Elijah, but he also hung out with people that maybe his mother wouldn't have wanted him to. And we know he calls us to do the same thing, to be his hands and feet in the world and to reach out in love, just as Jesus did, to others, all kinds of people. Jesus was transfigured, and with God's help, we too can leave behind the boundaries and reach out in love to all. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>